You want to talk plants? Most blueberries eaten throughout the world come from one North American species, Vaccinium corimbosum, known as Northern highbush blueberry. The specific epithet corimbosum referred to its type of inflorescence, a corimb. Corimb, it's a type of inflorescence where the flowers that are lower on the stem will have longer pedicels reaching out to the same level as the flowers that are higher on the stems, which have shorter pedicels, giving the inflorescence an overall flat top appearance. Vaccine corimbosum can grow over two meters tall, making it easier to pick than low bush uh, blueberry species. And fruits are clustered together due to the corimb, also making fruit picking more efficient. Pre-Columbian North American populations were consuming blueberries for thousands of years. But early in the 20th century, Elizabeth Coleman White was working with her parents on their cranberry farm in New Jersey. And she was interested in cultivating blueberries. So she offered financial rewards to people that found blueberry plants with unusual large fruit. Later, she reached out to Frederick Colville, a botanist who was studying wild blueberries. These early efforts of cultivating vaccine corimbosum led to understanding several aspects of growing blueberries, the importance of acidic soils, and that blueberries do not easily self-pollinate. Blueberries and other members of the vaccinium plant genus, as well as other members of the Ericaceae plant family, adapted to a very ingenious co-evolutionary type pollination, buzz pollination. Buzz pollination uses high-frequency buzzing vibrations to shake off pollen from their otherwise quite protected stamens in their upside-down urn-shaped flowers. Best pollinators for such specialized flowers are bumblebees, wild bees, and honeybees. These early 20th century selection efforts of the best genotypes to use in cultivation led to a doubling in size of the fruit and made blueberries a valuable crop around the world. Vaccinium corimbosum is now cultivated throughout North America with top producers on the West Coast in Oregon, Washington, California, and British Columbia, in the middle in Michigan, on the East Coast in Georgia, New Jersey, and North Carolina. Vaccinium corimbosum is cultivated in Germany, Sweden, and Netherlands since the 1930s. And Romania started cultivating tall bush blueberries in 2000s and is rapidly increasing production. Vaccinium corimbosum is also cultivated in the southern hemisphere in Peru, Brazil, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, as well as in South Africa and Zimbabwe, in New Zealand and Australia. Growing blueberries. Blueberries grow on shrubs and are relatively easy to grow. Several ideas to keep in mind. Blueberries need acidic soil rich in organic matter, and even though you should provide water in dry spells of the season, the soil should be free draining. Blueberries grow best in full sun, but sheltered from strong winds. And growing two or more varieties of blueberries for cross-pollination will increase fruit production. It will take a few years to produce fruit, starting to have a relatively good crop about year five. In ten, eight to 10 years, your blueberry bushes will reach full size, after which they will go on for many decades. And when it comes to longevity, this is pretty good for fruit producing plants, even better to some fruiting trees. Good blueberry bush care includes weeding and mulching. Pine leaves mulch is a great idea as it's acidic, but you still need to add some good acidifying fertilizer. I use Epsoma in spring and fall after I weed and I add more natural mulch. I used to use peat moss for a variety of horticultural benefits, acidifier, water retention, looser soil. But then I realized that taking peat moss from peat bogs can be damaging for these very fragile and very impressive ecosystems. Peat bogs cradle a diverse vegetation that depends on these acidic soil. Unless you know that your peat moss is from areas that do not damage natural peat bogs, I suggest against using peat moss. In the fall, blueberry bushes provide an added splash of beautiful color to the end of the season. In winter, blueberry bushes can benefit from some pruning, mostly to remove dry branches and even some of the older branches that will produce smaller and less fruit the next season. 
and never remove more than 20% of the bush and complete pruning during the dormant months of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, preferably before March.